All right, thanks everybody for tuning in for this Tech Notice live stream. What we're going to be doing is actually building a PC live here. And um, what will happen is you're going to see this without any cuts. So sometimes seeing a PC built without any cuts or anything like that is absolutely fine. Um, just a little distortion, someone's saying. Now it should be fine. Okay. So there's a few things that I want to get out of the way, first of all. Um, if you are a first-time builder or you've never built a PC before, then this stream is for you. Perhaps you're thinking, look, I've seen all the tech notice videos, but there's no chance I can build a PC. Well, watch this live stream and you'll see it's actually easy. Everyone can do it. No problem. Step by step guide. And once you build it for the first time, you can see people will comment this on the comments as well. You'll know that you'll never go back because you realize there's this whole other world of building PCs. So many different parts. You can mix and match them. It's just absolutely amazing and you can really configure it to your budget to your needs to your workflow Especially as a creator. So that's what I want to show you and um, here now and Like I mentioned, it's good to see someone else do it live without any cuts without any editing If there's gonna be some issues coming across you're gonna see them as well And we'll try to sort them live and that will give you confidence that look actually maybe I can do that as well and if you don't know which parts to choose for your PC build, perhaps, you know, you are, you've got a set of lists already out there, right? Or you've already put something together, you know what you want, then great. If you don't, then I've got best bang for buck build guide uh, videos in the description below. You go check them out. I'll leave a link down there for you. And um, there's four videos there, four part series. You pick the one that's closest to your budget. By the way, those links will always leave to, uh, lead you to the latest videos that I have uploaded about the series. So go check them out in there and um, you know, you'll get your PC part or what do you want for your, whatever budget you have. You've got a PC part list then set and then you can come back to this video and then see how the PC is built. Even though you've got slightly different parts, it essentially really works the same. You'll 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 know what I'm talking about. Also, if there's anything else that I'm using in this video, I'm gonna leave it linked in the description below. And uh, if you have any questions, I can see uh, Merciless uh, Rascal is already uh, asked one question for me. If you have a question, tag me at Tech Notice. Now, uh, this is gonna be my secondary priority because I'm gonna have to man all the cameras do the talking, what we're going to do, and then try to interact with these uh, questions there as well. So, um, yeah, tag me at Tech Notice because then I'll see a little orange, you know, me tagged, and then it's going to be easier uh, to know when the and what question was asked. But let's start then. By the way, this PC is not for me, and this is actually one of the subscribers who reached out and said, look, uh, shall we build a PC? And um, I don't accept all of the uh, you know builds and what we're doing here um, as a subscribers uh, i'm not asking any money for this um and then he's gonna get a pc but i just wanted to accept some of them so that i can show you some of these builds and i don't have to either get brands to send me lots of stuff or get lots of stock that's just stocking up on the shelf here after the build is done and things sometimes it's not very efficient but this way we can build a pc give it away and then we can move on but you can see how PC is built so if you have some interesting you know ideas what's PC to build you can contact me on the email all the parts that I'm using here as well are linked in the description below if you want to check this particular PC out there's gonna be a beautiful fractal no case here oh look at this case this is one of my favorite well I think this is my favorite case ever um, the white one and the black one. I kind of like the black one here a bit more with the dark brown wood and golden accents. It's very, very nice. So the PC building starts with the motherboard. And the thing that you probably need is... Hmm, where's my screwdriver going from here? One second, I left it there. My screwdriver. Here, here it is. So, oh, Ramesh, thank you very much for your super chat. You don't have to do that. That's uh, absolutely amazing. Thanks very much. So, if you're looking for some tools to, like, what you need for PC building, really, a screwdriver, any kind of screwdriver will do. But I have bought this iFixit little screwdriver set kit, like, a few years ago. And honestly, it's 
is one of the best things I've, I've bought because it fixes all sorts of little things whenever you're fixing electronics or whatever. Plus, it's got magnetic tip and extension and long ones. I'll leave this in the description below as well if you want to check that out. Let's see which one was it. Uh, ah, I've taken them off. Never mind. So, the motherboard. What you want to do is open the box. Let's go to this. Alrighty, and then inside you'll see a few things inside your motherboard. And uh, this is the Wi-Fi antenna, which we're going to put on the side at the moment. We don't need that. Here's the motherboard. Now I'll take it gently out and just set it on the side for a moment. Underneath you'll see other accessories and like this is going to be your main guide as well. If you don't know how to build a PC, honestly, this these manuals don't underestimate them how useful they can be. And here's all sorts of little screws and things. Let me see which we do we need here. Um, okay, there's a front panel connector. We're going to take a few of these pads out as well. They're little square standoffs. Uh, we don't need these, don't need these, don't need, don't need the rest of them. Okay. Um, I'll leave the Wi-Fi antenna on the side for a moment. Okay, and then close the box because we're going to be building on the box. What you want to do is take this motherboard out from this little um, sheath. What I like to do is put your hand underneath in there and then you'll see the fingers here will stick on the back of the CPU um, back plate there. So you can easily hold on to this one. And then on the other side you've got your thumb in there and then you can pull it out without really touching anything odd or weird and then just lay it down on the box here. Another trick also here is that when you lay it on the box, try to overlap the back cover slightly so that the back cover kind of slots down there. I'll show you this here because this is a little bit higher. If you put it over here and you start putting RAM in or whatever, you actually start bending it slightly. So put this slightly over it and then everything else is flat and you know that you can press on the motherboard and it's not gonna bend anything else if that makes sense. Uh, this anti-static you can put on the side for now, but try to keep track where your things are and what things are which in which box if you mean. Uh, what I mean is like the motherboard things stay in the motherboard box and so on. Uh, there is a lag with what? Is it with audio? Montex Sky 2 is an amazing case as well. Yeah, I've, I've got it downstairs. We're going to do a build with it uh, there. Okay, let me see if someone's saying, is it lag? Shu is saying is lag. I don't see. Is the audio and video in sync? Let me know. Okay, people saying he's tripping. Ah, okay. So then, we've got it. We've got the motherboard laid out in here, and then we're going to do a few things, right? First of all, you want to get out your CPU, okay? We've got, I'm going to put this on the side. We've got the Intel i9-13900K, which is one of the best greatest CPUs that you can actually uh, get for now. There's this little thing, I've already cut it. And then you get the big chip that's coming out. Okay, we'll put, this, put that on the side somewhere. And then if we just undo it clockwise, Voila, and we've got the CPU in here. Thanks guys for saying it's good. Uh, so I know that this is all right. So in order to install your CPU, you're gonna have to undo this socket here, okay? There's a little lever here on the side, pop it up, and then it just comes out. It's very simple, you can't really mess it up. Now, don't pull this back until you actually have the CPU open because you don't want to drop anything on the socket just to be safe, just in case you slip something or spit in there. It's no good for this, all right? So take your CPU and then you pop this open. Also, some, be careful when you're opening these. 
sometimes these protector cases, what I've had happen to me is they kind of pop out as you're like trying to mm, come on, boop, and then your CPU just flies off and you can damage it as well. Just be careful. So once you have the CPU here, I'll just zoom in a bit. There we go. So you you can see a little corner on the CPU. Can you see? In there, there's that little arrow in here, and that lines up with this bottom arrow over there. Okay? So you know the CPU goes in one way. You can't really put it the other way, but it's that. The motherboard I'm using, by the way, is the Asus ProAd Z790 Creator Wi-Fi. People might be saying, Asus, uh, honestly, it's a bit blown out issue. I know that there's a lot of things happening, but this is one of the best Creator motherboards because it features um, like Thunderbolt, very fast USB connectivity, 10 gig port there for your Ethernet, 2.5, and actually, is it 2? Yeah, 2.5 and 10 gig, lots of fast USB, Wi-Fi 6E, um, lots of fast NVMe storage there, it's very very good and why not z690 because they've probably stopped producing z690 now and the z790 is actually cheaper than the z690 so i see no point so you open the socket and then you take hold of your cpu i'll take it this way so it's probably easy for you to see and then literally try to drop it into the socket i'll just double check the socket so that there's no bent bins or whatever because that will be a huge troubleshooting issue if you don't see the bent pins now and then you find out later that ooh, I don't know why things are not working so the CPU is in there you can do a little wiggle there you can see the notches in there line up up there and there and then that's really installed usually what you want to do now is like take this plastic cover off just pop it over there and then put it down and then close this and boom your CPU is installed but we are actually using something here, which is a contact plate from Thermalright, okay? And this is a thing that I'd recommend people get for their i9s and, um, you know, i7 CPUs because that will really kind of help the longevity of the CPU because of the rectangular design of the CPUs. What will happen is when it heats up and cools down, you can actually just bend the IHS slightly. But then this here is very foolproof design, really, how to do it. There is the Thermal Grizzly one, which is like $40 or something like that. This one you can get for really $10, and that's amazing. It comes with a little uh, latch or like little Torx head. All you do is take these screws in there. Super simple. You want to keep the screws but unscrew it and then it comes off right we want to keep the screws here put the screws on the side and take the same from there I'm trying to get my fingers out of the way okay Oh, come on screws so we need the screws so basically we're taking the tension or the mounting frame of the original motherboard off and then keep it there because your um, the back plate might fall off but all you have got to do now is this bracket here there's another arrow there and you line it up with that so we're gonna turn it around like that and gently just lower it down there boom and then we'll just pop the screws in. And then you can screw them down in, do like in a, in a star pattern type of thing, but don't tighten them all the way there. But this is really a foolproof um, contact frame because it's got a hard stop so it's been designed so that the back of the contact plate will just be stuck to the motherboard. So you can't really over tighten it because it just doesn't go any further. It will put the perfect tension there. The, th the thermal right contact frame, what will happen there is there is a little gap in there and there's a special tension and special in order like turns you'll have to do, which potentially gives you better performance. 
uh, in some kind of very specific overclocking ways but this one doesn't um, let me know if you're using the contact frame there but basically you just now tighten it all the way until you just hit hard stop or hard end on stand pattern there we go because it's now the bottom is hitting the motherboard this thing by the way will keep you CPU cooler and better as well the thing is that it, you might I'm not sure about the warranty it shouldn't lose the warranty but you might do when you take these things off your motherboard but there's no real you know instructions and things when they say oh you if you remove this you'll lose the motherboard you know warranty or something like that so I'll put it back in the uh, contact frame there box oh sorry I'll show you I'll put them back in the contact frame box and then put that back in there okay and then the CPU is now installed next we're gonna be taking out our RAM and we've got 64 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance DDR5 this is Intel XMP ready by the way so when you're getting the RAM even though you have the same model there is Intel and AMD kind of specific RAMs one of them is AMD Expo ready and then Intel XMP which is basically like an overclocking profile for your RAM one for AMD platform AM5 uh, and then one for Intel's one now even though they theoretically work across the board as well so you can really get the Intel working on the AMD and AMD one on the Intel but they only have one Intel XMP profile stored on this RAM kit there so when you put that in in the Intel system it will just load that and it's gonna be fine but if you install this on the AMD system it will kinda of load the Intel profile which is not ideal in the long sense of uh, long term you know so we'll just pop that one there So that guy is saying what are the contact frames for it's really for Intel's 13 and 12th gen I've got a video on my channel um, that I uploaded recently but that will just help spread the kind of tension of the CPU more evenly the previous included contact frame uh, that comes with the motherboard only puts it on the side and because it's rectangular it will start pushing the middle down making a little cavity in the middle there over time when you heat up the CPU and the metal gets a bit softer so you might lose a bit of temperature um, kind of spec there but this will just help it keep there and it's only ten dollars and at that point when you buy an i9 it's a no-brainer for me so here again whoop, it comes open this way this is 5600 mega transfers per second and when choosing the RAM for your system there's few things first of all you want to know if your IMC the integrated memory controller of your CPU is able to keep up with the speed of the RAM the Intel's 13th gen CPUs are all rated at 5600 mega transfers per second at um, really dual channel or like two sticks and then um, single rank if you've got dual rank and all that basically I've gone very conservative here even though the integrated mem memory control of the 13th gen is able to push so much more like 7,000 8,000 sometimes and overclockers get even like 10,000 megatransfers out of it which is pretty much double what I'm using here but this is still much faster than DDR4 DDR4 where um, you know 32 3600 some of the faster ones 4000 so we're getting close to double the DDR4 speed but um, it's very very affordable here as well we found this vengeance kit extremely extremely affordable less than two hundred dollars if I'm not mistaken so let's get this installed there is four sticks here but if you only use or four slots here if you use two slots what you want to do is make sure that you've got the right slots um, to plug them in there is a little cheat guide in here as you can see they go a1 a2 b1 b2 so a1 a2 b1 b2 and it shows here that a2 and b2 are the ones that you should 
populate first. So the second one here and then that one here. So you pop one stick out. It doesn't matter which stick goes where, so you can put it there or there. You open this on this side. Okay, now you can slot it in. This side doesn't open. And then make sure that your notch is the right way. Usually whatever the front of the ram is facing that way. So like that. And then I'm going to pop it in here. And then press down in there until you see a click in there. Alrighty. Then we'll do the same with the other one. It's nice, simple, black locking RAM, but gives us a ton of performance. And then later on in the future, if you want to, you can get a secondary kit of this, install them in there. You might not be able to run the XMP at 5600 mega transfers. Uh, I'll show you, hopefully, if we have time, how to run the XMP in BIOS as well and what to do there. But it's that. Uh, Jordan Robinson is saying, I'm torn on 3900K and 7950X. What do you do as a workflow? Um, in substance painter, I think you might be better with... Well, I'm usually saying 3900K just because of the single core performance. But, uh, and stability right now with AM5 platform and, you know, that stuff. Um, now, we've got... A cooler installation next. For the cooler, I am using a beautiful, beautiful Noctua cooler. The cooler I'm using is the Noctua NHU12A. This is one of the best Noctua coolers. In my opinion, the best one you can get right now. Just the compact of this the noise of this there is the nhd 15 as well which is a little bit more powerful uh, but in my testing i actually saw better results with this one and it's it just looks beautiful it's very high quality noctua's support in terms of warranty and everything is absolutely amazing let me see if, what the warranty here is it's gonna be let me see if they say it on the box it's probably like five years six years some of them ten years or something like that I don't don't quote me on this now here but it's incredible uh, what Noctua is doing and so is DDR5 worth it as of 2023 or should I uh, stick with DDR4 mobile new PC build here D source is saying I'd say have a look at the prices. Have a look what the price difference is between DDR4 and DDR5. You might be surprised how affordable DDR5 is. And it's like since a year ago, DDR5 is cheaper than DDR4 for the same amount, if that makes sense. So a year ago, I saw DDR5 like being so overpriced and DDR4 was... You know, 65, uh, 64 gigabyte kit like this, what we have here, um, was priced about um, $250, something like that. And now to get DDR5, much faster, newer technology, less than $200, is crazy deal to me. So, the cooler here, I'm going to put it upside down. What you want to do is get the fans off. There's these little clips on the sides. So, you pull it this way and then up and then it opens it up and then you can get the fans both of the fans off for now these are one of the best fans you can get in the world as well so this cooler already comes with like incredible fans um so some of the coolers have a weakness of fan speeds or they have like a lower quality fans but this one very high quality fans so we'll put the fans on the side for a minute at the moment and then you've got the contact plate on the bottom here. Keep the plastic cover on, protecting it. Mine came loose in the box, so I put it back on there so I can stick it on the side and leave it up like that. Um, someone saying, as a DaVinci Resolve user, if I have to put more budget, should I go with i7 13700K to 13900K or... 4070Ti to 4080, I would go 4070Ti to 4080, you'll see bigger 
improvement in performance just because of more VRAM which DaVinci Resolve uses but the 13700K is already very very good uh, incredible performance there so now we're gonna have to find out our platform um, kind of mounting kit for this because this cooler goes to all sorts of different so you can use it on AMD Intel previous generations so find here we're looking for LG A1700 okay we're gonna find this and always I always double check this because you can never remember um, like which screws or which washers did you always use um, in this here but first of all where is our back plate here okay here so on the bottom here there's this it says here LGA let me see if you can see that come on focus there we go LGA and there's 1700 in the back there can you see so we can use this for our build and then these are the right pouches here we're looking for the blue standoffs and then little black washer things and okay we'll do that one later we'll do this first so we want to prepare our back mounting first um, and then this here says this side must be facing the motherboard there's a big caution here okay so make sure that you do it this way because it will go underneath the motherboard like that so then we're going to take out these here okay and then there's these metal screws and these metal screws will go in the outside of these if that makes sense there's like little triangles and the triangles can be like outside or a little bit inside we're gonna go with the outside ones and then you take the uh, little black washer and then you click it in on the side there and then that metal washer will hold the screw from not like falling out from this metal frame and then we're gonna do it on all sides the triangle is like pointing outwards or so going to the outside frame that and then the black washer across okay 13600k is fine with an air cooler oh yeah even all the um, Intel CPUs can be fine really with an air cooler you just gotta disable some of the um, overclocking settings from the motherboard BIOS that a lot of the motherboards just come by default stick on Intel settings I'll show you here okay so back bracket bracket now is ready okay and then I'm gonna do it this way now so what you want to do now is here this back bracket here okay that goes through these holes in the motherboard there's two holes in this motherboard and and it will go to the outside holes and then gently just push it through and it will just go on the back of this and then now you can put the motherboard back down just like that and then I'll stick it around there alrighty next we're gonna have to install okay I'll put these extra black washers put it back in there Next, we're going to install the um, bracket on top of this here. I'll show you what I mean. Put this on the side of it. Okay, so we'll take the blue washers. It's very nicely colorated there for Noctua. And then throw them down these screws that you push through the other side of the motherboard. doesn't matter which way you're going to put them. It works exactly the same. And then, if I'm not mistaken, it's these here. Yes. So these little bendy brackets, whatever you call them, metal clips. We're going to need two of these. And then, let me double check. Yeah. 
and then you can actually get the cooler mounted like pushing air upwards or sideways but sideways is more optimal so let me double check which holes are we going to be using for these Uh, number two okay so on these brackets there is there's three holes in here okay one two three and these screws here we're gonna have to go in to the second middle hole and then the bend goes outwards just like that okay I'll put it in here like that so the bracket will go in there we go so can you see it's on the second hole not on the side ones and then the same in here make sure that you're not putting to one to three hole or that these are parallel and both of them are in the second holes if that makes sense and then there's this other box in there and then we're gonna take of these little nuts that go on the top there one two three four okay and this here is now good for if you've got a screwdriver this will help you just put that screw on top there and you can do them by hand at first actually just put them on top there and then really screw them in. Is 13600 good enough for 4K color grading? Yes, absolutely. 13600K is as good, actually slightly better, than the 12700K from previous generation. Um, have a look at my video between them two it's absolutely incredible so now once you put the screws in there you just tighten them up so that not like mental tightness but kind of yep they're quite tight now it's not gonna go anywhere and um, Tommy is saying is it really necessary for the contact frame because he can't find it in his country uh, I highly recommend like check out like AliExpress and stuff like as well because you might get it very very cheap from there But it's not really necessary like it's a little bit extra that we can get but You're completely fine without it as well. So don't worry about it too much So now we're gonna have to install thermal paste thermal paste is basically this um, squishy pasty material that goes between the CPU and your cooler plate because if you put two metals together doesn't matter how finely manufactured this is there's little cracks and things between the cpu and the cooler that we need want to fill out with material that gets the heat from the cpu to the cooler so that the cpu will run cooler and when the cpu runs cooler it will also be faster higher clock speeds better endurance so it's the best thing to do is to run the cpu as cool as possible so in order to do that, um, let me see what Noctua recommends here for the thermal paste application. Uh, where are you? Okay, just in the middle there. Well, we're gonna do a better job than that. There is little tube or syringe in there. That's got the thermal paste in, comes with the cooler. Okay, and you want this long screwdriver from the case there as well if you um, later on we're going to need to screw this down I've got this long Noctua screwdriver as well but oh this is I've got an Noctua screwdriver as well so I can do it with this one but there is already screwdriver in the box so you can use that one as well if you want so what you want to do is get this and I've got um where's my spatula here I've got this spatula you can get this extra from Amazon it doesn't really um, cost much to get it uh, extra five dollars maybe or something like that you don't necessarily need it you can get away with just putting like a pea-sized blob in the middle of the CPU 
and then the cooler will squish it down everywhere. But because this is such a high-end cooler, and the, it matters less when we go with i7 and i5, um, but it still is better to do it this way. So what I'd like to do is I'm just going to put like a like a line on top of the CPU, okay? And then put the excess, just wipe it off in there. And then I'm going to use this spreader that I have in here. And then spread it out very thinly all over the CPU. It's nice and squishy, this thermal paste from Noctua. So if you look at that now. It goes all over. CPU. Perfect. And then the leftovers. I've always got a bit of toilet paper around. Make sure that you don't get any fibers or anything in there now. Yeah, that's good coverage. I'm just going to wipe my spatula clean again. A little trick if you don't have a spatula, if you want to do this uh, at home and you know, want to get a little cheap but the same kind of a uh, result then i'd recommend getting a bit of cling film put it around your finger and then you can spread it around with your finger with the cling film and then but you don't want to do it with your obviously finger grease because you don't want to get any grease in there by the way just before you start pc building make sure that you have washed your hands so you don't have any like random grease or sweaty hands or something there because grease is not good uh, for the computer components so now this is thermal paste installed there Alrighty, and then, okay, what you want to do is, I've got a bit of a cloth here, I've got a bit of dust in there, you want to get some kind of microfiber cloth or something, okay, a few dust specks on the cooler there, now it's clean, look, nicely polished like um, mirror. And then we want to put it down there. And then, wait a second, let me see which way does it go there again. So it goes, oh, actually, this way, I put it. Alrighty, just because it's, it's not the same as you can see from the top there. Let's spread COVID right now. Just because the coolers don't go here, so the Nocto is kind of red from that side. So the gap of this is actually on the back, right? Yeah, so we're going to push it down this way because if you put it the other way, the as you can see, it's not equal in terms of the fan, you might struggle with the uh, uh, RAM compatibility. So make sure that you do, do install the cooler this way, not that way, okay? So this is the kind of outside of the cooler that goes on the back of the IO port in here. That little notch goes in the back. So now gently lower it down and then line it up with, so obviously these screws will go now into these little um, screws on the, on the bracket. Let's see. Okay. Try to avoid like putting this the cooler on the CPU and lifting it off and putting it on and lifting it off because then you're going to just ruin the thermal paste application because you peel it off and put it back on. So now once you've got it lined up with the screws, you it still wiggles around a little bit. I like to do a little wiggle there because just the tiny little pressure there, it helps to kind of get even better spread and tightness of of the contact to the CPU. So I'll get them going a little bit. Okay, so now tighten these screws up in a kind of equal way. So they go down, look at the small picture, I'll show you on this one. So they go down kind of equally like that, not like 
that and that and that and that because then you'll push the thermal paste if you tighten it like that and then tighten this one you just push the thermal paste out but you want to get slowly down like that so let's do that let's have a look at some of the comments what material is a no-no to place the motherboard on um well the box of the motherboard is like the best one i guess something that can ruin the back capacitors of the motherboard and the back of it that will be a no-no but uh, therm thermal and electricity conductive materials no good but cardboard is good for that Yep, I don't know, is saying remember to remove the plastic seal on the bottom of the cooler. Yep, sometimes there is a little plastic kind of a sticker on the bottom of the cooler instead of this. Obviously, I had this uh, plastic kind of a cover, but there's sometimes a sticker that is there. So whatever cooler you have, make sure that you don't have a sticker there because it just protects it from any kinks or any um, anything like that. But I didn't have that on this cooler. Yeah, someone is saying is liquid metal good in terms of performance yes it's cool but it also comes with a lot of faff and um, a little tricks so it's really for overclockers I'd say yeah you can get a very cool performance but they usually use it for like direct die cooling and things like that for creators I'd say just save yourself from this like instability potential issues and troubleshooting if you don't need like extra every little one percent of your um like cpu don't use it but like if i'm just looking at the you know cooling capabilities yes liquid metal is good okay yeah alchem chrome is saying the the same it breaks down okay i've got it uh, screwed down now i've hit hard stop and then that's basically it now. Make sure that you've got all your cooler things, all the screws and things that came with the cooler back in the cooler box. And then I'm going to put the cooler back in the cooler box. Yeah, liquid metal may leak and short out the motherboard. That's what someone's saying there. Alrighty, so now the cooler is installed. Uh, let's install some SSDs next. So we've got two SSDs here. One of them is a Crucial P3 Plus, links in the description if you want to check any of these out. And then one of them is a two terabyte Western Digital Black SN770. Now these are Ender 2 SSDs and these will go on these little covers underneath what you can see. There is four M.2s that you can install here and there's all of these slots support PCIe Gen 4 storage. And you can get as high of a SSDs or as low as you want, as many of them as you want. Right now we're going with two. One of them for the operating system and then one of them for the projects and programs and, um, you know, kind of your project drive, what I call it. And that will go uh, on the second slot and on the first slot. The only important thing to know is that the fastest SSD that you have, you want to put on the top slot where your program and OS SSD is because that will be directly connected to the CPU rather than through the chipset to the CPU, which will just delay a little bit, have a, a bit of a longer or higher latency to go to the CPU. But the front slot will just be directly to the CPU. So the programs and OS is what you want on the faster drive so that you get the least latency and the fastest drive possible there and these are the two drives that we got for here because they were in a very very good deal now you're going to see a video about them on my channel but there are some new drives that I have found that are absolutely amazing that you should know about this is Solidime P44 Pro and then P41 Plus. They're not sponsoring for me to say that, even though the video that will come out on the channel um, at some point 
uh, will be sponsored because they wanted me to check them out. But at first they said, look, can you do an integration on the channel about these SSDs? I said, yeah, that's fine. When I started looking at the SSDs, the specs, the performance, I, I said to them, look, can I do a dedicated instead of the integration, which you'll see very soon on the channel, because these SSDs are insane. If you didn't know what's going on in here, yo, Aaron, nice to see you there. And then these SSDs are basically old Intel SSDs. Intel sold their SSD business to Solidime, basically. So Solidime is SK Hynix and Intel SSD magic together, and then you get these. There's P41 Plus, which is kind of a mid-range um, Gen 4 SSD, and then there's the top of the range, P44 Pro. Now, the P44 Pro is, like, beating out a lot of the high-end drives, like Western Digital SN 850X, Samsung 990 Pro, 980 Pro, KC3000 from Kingston. It's incredible performance, and a lot of it is due to the re random read and write speeds of the SSD. Now, I don't want to go too much in detail um, about these and why these are good, but these are definitely worth checking out, especially when you look at the price point of these. I don't know how this is possible to get something like that um, so cheaply across. I highly recommend checking them out as well. I haven't, yeah, I think I linked them. Yeah, I put them in. Um, in the description below as well, but um, that's helpful there. Now you want to get your screwdriver that has um, Phillips one head. So it's a skinny head screwdriver. And then we want to undo this top SSD cover slot there. Whoa, that screw was on a bit tight. Okay. Are those are DRAM? The P44 has DRAM, but the P41 Plus doesn't have DRAM. So the mid-range doesn't have DRAM, but the high-end one does, if that makes sense. Okay, so you've got a little heat spreader here. So this is a thermal pad that will go onto the heatsink and helps to cool down the SSD. But we'll take this P3 Plus. So this is a one terabyte drive, which we're going to be putting for the OS. Okay. Okay, here it is. Don't take off the sticker on the top. Any of the SSDs, you don't need to take them off. It's just there for... They've also engineered this so that you don't lose any heat or anything. It'll go there. So then, this is the top of the drive, and this is the bottom of the drive. As you can see, on the bottom, we have no chips. And if you see on the top there, uh, if you look very close to the SSD, there's the NAND chips and the, um, you know, controller everything's on the top but we've got this standoff in there remember we took these little square standoffs from the motherboard box if you're wondering what these are for then these are for ssds that don't have chips on the bottom side and what you want to do is just stick them okay on this little rubber standoff already there which makes it extra height so this is basically the height of the of the bottom chip if you had it on an SSD and then you're gonna pop it in into this slot there you can't really go wrong because there's a notch in there and so obviously you can see it there as well you just it the only thing is that you kind of install it on an angle let me see if you can see it from this side so it doesn't quite go like straight in but on an angle there we go. And then it keeps like going up like that. Can you see how it's poking up just like that? Actually, the top cam is a little bit better. You can see how this is poking up there like that. And then now you want to push this down. And there's a little quick um, install on toolless design um, like holders there. So you're going to pop it down. Let's see if we can get it bit closer for this one and then all you have to do is just slide this boom do you see that and now it holds the SSD down and then the SSD is installed okay and then we're gonna take the 
sticker off from this. So this is for the thermal pad. So this is a thermal pad, but there's a little protective film on it. So we're going to take that off. Oh. Peel that off just like that, and that will stick to the SSD and get the heat out. So if you remember, the corner goes on the bottom, as you can see on these there, because the screw holes won't line up. So just so you know, it goes like that into the corner. And then line up the screw holes, one side and the other side, and then screw it back down. Can I connect M.2 PCIe Gen 4 to PCIe Gen 5? Yes. So the M.2 drives are always backwards compatible, not forwards compatible, if that makes sense. So you can install Gen 5 drive into the Gen 4 slot as well, actually, if you wanted to, but you only get Gen 4 speed. So they are actually backwards and forwards compatible, but you'll be capped at whatever the slot is rated at, if that makes sense. And then let's do the same on the bottom drive here. Now, I'm going to take this one, but then later on you can add some more in here. There's third and fourth slots on there, but because we only have two of them, I'm going to put the secondary one in here. So this is the SN770. Both of them are Gen 4 drives, actually to utilize the Gen 4 speeds and all that. So when you get the SSD, again, let's have a look underneath. You can see clearly here the chips on the top. Can you see that? And then when you look underneath, nothing underneath. So we're going to want to put a standoff in there as well. Why did I choose an air cooler for this CPU? Well, there's a multiple reasons. First of all, this air cooler is completely fine for this. Um, and it's completely hassleless. You don't need to worry about if your liquid or or anything is running out. Um, air coolers are kind of, you know, worry proof, right? And the other reason is that if you go actually liquid cooler, you can't really mount it into this case, so you'll be struggling to fit the GPU. You'll see that a bit later. But air coolers will fit into this case, no problem. So same thing push it down and then we're going to twist oh, that's a bit more awkward we need small fingers for that twist it and then it's installed again we'll take put peel this film off and then pop it on there would you recommend pci x16 ssd converters the source is saying only on a Threadripper platform, not on um, a con like consumer platform where we only have uh, like 24 or 20 lanes, PCA lanes. This one only has 20 PCA lanes on the uh, Intel platform. AMD has 24, but it's not enough to run the SSDs and then GPUs on a RAID. So, you know, they're really for Threadripper system unless you don't use the dedicated GPU, but use the integrated GPU, then yeah, you can use these for storage if you wanted to, but I would recommend. It's only for like high-end storage. So now it's installed. Don't like screw them in that hard because um, you don't need that much pressure on it. But as long as, you know, they're tight there, I'm just going to take this sticker off there as well. Boom. And then off we go. We're done here. Okay. Just clean up there. The solid dime is 1200 terabytes for the two terabyte one. Yes, the two terabyte, that's the only downside for these solid dimes is the two terabyte terabytes written spec is a little bit lower than one terabyte spec, if, I, uh, if you know what I mean. Because one terabyte is, or well, two terabyte one is not just double the one terabyte one spec. One terabyte is 750, which is much higher than Samsung 990 Pro. Um, Western Digital SN850X, uh, 990 Pro, uh, KC3000 is 800 actually, so that's a little bit higher, but it's it's higher than um, you know usual what you see there, but much lower price point there. Okay, so um, it starts to get interesting now because our SSD's motherboard we're getting we're getting close there. I'm just throwing some rubbish away. Oh, I'll put this. Uh, 
cooler paper off as well. What if you only have single M.2 slot? Then use the maximum capacity or maximum bandwidth for that slot and as much capacity as you can afford. Now, we're going to put the fans back on on this cooler, okay? And then make sure that you you mount them the right way. So this is the front of the fan and it will blow the air through and this comes out from the back of it. And as you can see, we're gonna have to put that on the back of it here. So one goes in the back and one goes in the front. Just use those clips. And then we're gonna clip it. There. Just double checking. Yep, went in, went in, and you can see there's there's the um the cable for this now goes into these there one of them is cpu header there and then one of them is cpu optional i'll, I'll show you there so the let me see the silver one or gray one here is uh, the main CPU one and then the other one is CPU optional. So basically both of these are fan headers, but they are they share the fan curve control from BIOS if you don't know what it means. Basically you can put um, or plug both of these in there just like that. I'm gonna, it doesn't matter which one you put into either of them, but they both need to be plugged in. I'll just push the cable down there. And that's going to be fine there. We'll take the other, other one. Okay, that goes in the front there now. And we want to put it, okay, down there as well. As you can see, RAM compatibility, extremely good. You can have super long sticks there if you wanted to. It still won't cover all the RAM. And then now we can take the other one. You can fold it a little bit. And put the other one plug it next to it there just like that if you only have one connector on your motherboard the cooler actually comes with a splitter so you can plug both of these two headers into one and then put it into one header on the motherboard they both end up doing exactly the same job so make sure that your front fan is on this side blowing air that way and then the other one is blowing it out that way so now it's this is done there Next, we're going to have to start using our case now and doing case uh, prep. I'm just going to put the motherboard slightly on the side there for now. Okay. So, the... Okay, let's do it there. Then... The case has screws in the back of it here. I'm going to unscrew this and then the side panel on this comes off. Doesn't matter which case you're using, it works very, very similarly. And if I remember correctly, how did it go? Did it slide back? Yeah, you slide it backwards and then it slides off just like that. All right. And this is um, the one with the mesh panel there. And this, the person who actually gets it wanted a um, tempered glass panel, but they didn't have that version. So they bought this version and then they're gonna go with a tempered glass later. Alrighty. So the back panel off, the front panel you just pull from the bottom. Boom, that comes off. We're gonna put that on the side there as well. The top panel, let me show you this way. It comes off by just lifting it up, boom. And then we'll take that off as well. And then the back, again, or side back panel, you undo these that might be a bit tight for our fingers, but you pull back that it slides out and then just put them on the side for now we'll put them back this case actually has an extra little thing 
Can you see this kind of a plate on the front here? There's a little screw on the top there as well. I might need a screwdriver for this. If you undo that screw there, it will come slide off as well. You slide it that way and then it comes off. Not a lot of people know this about that case that you can get that that, that uh, take that one off as well. Well, was stuttering there. Okay. Then on the back of the case there, there's a little screw box, which we're going to need as well. Um, you can take it off by using, there's a little, okay, how do I show you this? Now? Can you see it from here? Yeah, let's, let's do it that way. So you can see that there is a little screw in there. If you undo that screw there. And you can undo the other one as well, actually, here. These are the hard drive base that you can install later on. But we're not going to have any hard drive base, so we're just going to take them off. Take one off. And then the other one off. Okay. And you want to take this out there. D source is saying, are these 180 millimeter fans in the front? No, they're just 140 millimeter fans there. Okay, these are accessories to install the motherboard and things in there. You're gonna, you can throw this, this um, whatever, little, um, it's not zip tie, just uh, some wire, throw it away, right? Okay, I'm gonna take this screw back out. And then these you can put on the side as well for now. You don't need that. And the next thing is we're going to have to find screws for the motherboard. There is actually a little um, cheat sheet here as well. Uh, so you can see which ones do we need. I think we're going to need the ones with the biggest head. The 16 of these, the M3 screws. And these will be the ones for the motherboard. If you don't know how to check that, which ones are right, so take the case and then lie it flat in here. Let's see. Okay, find one of the screws that you want to try to see if this is for the motherboard. Let me find these. Okay, there's the ones that have the most in. Okay, we'll take one of these and see those standoffs on the motherboard. That's where you're going to be screwing it in. But I'll just try if that's the right thread for this. Yep, these are the right threads. Okay, next we're going to have to lift the motherboard into this case, but there are standoffs on the case here the little bits here that the motherboard will stand on and then you screw the motherboard into these things as you can see the middle one has a little nubbin or like a little yeah I'd call it a nubbin so basically this will not be screwed in but this will help the motherboard to kind of just stay still because it goes into the screw hole you'll see in a moment and you're wondering or are these in the right places for my motherboard the short answer is if your motherboard is the standard ATX size, so the same size as I have here, there are smaller motherboards, motherboards that are slightly smaller. But for ATX size, this is an ATX size motherboard that I have. Usually most of the cases come with ATX size standoffs installed. But it's always good to double check if you've got the right ones. So what you can do is take your motherboard Okay, and then you can see the screw holes on the motherboard. Can you see? We've got some in there, some here, there, 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 on the top, and then in there, and then there, and then one inside that hole as well. And then you just want to make sure that they're lined up there. So what you can do is take hold of the cooler. That's what I usually like to do. Put it down there, and then slowly lower it 
onto the standoff. Don't put it on the standoff and start sliding it around because that's going to be um, not good either. But before you do that, actually, um, look, let's see if I can show you here. There is a little film on the back there. You might want to take that off. Might struggle to take that off later, but it could work fine later as well. But slowly down to there. And look, the back IO starts to line up. Okay, and now it goes in. As you can see, the nub in there, this one has gone into the screw hole and everything else is lining up. You can see all the screw holes. What you don't want to happen is that there are some standoffs in a wrong place. Perhaps if your motherboard has some not normal um, kind of screw hole layout, you don't want the screw holes to hit or the standoffs to hit something on the back of the motherboard because that would not be good. So now you take the screws that are for the motherboard that we checked previously and then you screw the motherboard in through these screw holes in there. Wait a second. Are these the right ones? I don't think these are the right ones. I think I made a mistake. I think these are too skinny. I think it's these ones there. Eight screws. They they've got like a mushroom head, not as flat mushroom head as we tried before. See, already made a mistake. So as you can see there, you pop that in. Yeah, that's much better. If you don't know how to start the thread or where the thread starts, what you can do is put the screw in, start screwing it the wrong way until you hear a click. Do you see that? Now it means we're in the beginning of the thread and if we start the other way, it starts going straight down. The CPU cooler, someone is asking what the name of this CPU cooler is. I've got a link in the description as well if you're not familiar with it or if you don't know which one this is. But this is called Noctua NHU12A Chromax Black because there is a silver heatsink version of this as well that has brown fans. But if you like the black version, that's what it's called. Alrighty, have I... Uh, how many fans can you run out of a single header before you have voltage issues? Um, quite a lot actually because there's a single headers usually are rated at 2 amperes so they run 12 volts and to get the wattage it's 12 volts times 2 amperes which is 24 um, watts and for 24 watts you can run quite a lot of them because usually a single fan is um, like 0.16 watts or something like that let me uh, sorry 0.16 amperes let me see there's one fantex t30 fan here let me see what this is rated so this is 0.36 amperes at maximum speed so you can run um what is it eight seven of these in there and these are quite like powerful fans 0.36 is quite high uh, amperage, so this is um, this will get you there. So, so these you can run. What did I say? Six. But then some of the other ones you can um, run a lot more. Okay, let me see. Did I have? Okay, um, I've got one screw. There it is. One last one. Alrighty, so now the motherboard is installed, it's in there, there we go. While we have this case flat in there, it's good time to also install some extra fans. I've got two in the front here, they're blowing air 
in they're called intake fans and they blow the air in from this way then the cooler takes the air and then blows them out but we're going to install another fan in the back here which this um the guy who gets it doesn't actually know that i'm doing it but i'm gonna install it there anyway because i've got a few extras of these so i just want to make sure he gets good good airflow there this fan has I need to install the black headers for it Ugh. okay take the black ones here and the screws we need as well the rest we can put back for now. Oh, wait a second. Oh, yeah, only on one side. So it's gonna go that way. So we're gonna install them on the back of the on the back of the fan. This Nocto cooler or EK nucleus, uh, depending for this build, uh, I wouldn't choose the EK because we'd be struggling. You you can't actually fit all the parts what we have for this build. If we had the nucleus but if I had a different build the EK nucleus would be much more powerful oh yeah get those power cables done good idea Alchemer because I just remembered there's these have so small holes in there so I've got to get them done first so before i'm going to put the fan actually there we've got to get the power cables done thanks for reminding me because uh, i just remember it's got very small holes for these i'll just put these screws on the side okay so Whew, it's getting very warm in here Put the motherboard box on the side now as well. Okay, we'll leave the cooler there. Let's stand this up because the motherboard's all installed. It's gonna be fine, but those. Alright. So for the power supply, we're using something that you might have never heard before. In fact, I had never heard before either. This is called the Colink Continuum 1050 Watt Power Supply. And at first I thought, um, is this any good or what, you know? But it's got very high ratings on it. It's made in China, but the it's actually made somewhere of the manufacturers are in Germany. But some of the awesome things here about it are is that the warranty isn't the longest for power supplies five-year warranty which is kind of mid-range there but it's got 80 plus platinum certified um, power rating which just shows that they have actually used quite high um, quality components there and this was on an incredible deal. I think we paid about 50 pounds for this or something like that to get a 1000 watt power supply 80 plus platinum. This is a crazy deal for that. So let's have a look. Where's the, uh, the gables here? So when you get the power supply, depending if yours is modular or non non modular, um, so this here is modular, which means that it doesn't have these uh, cables installed on there. There's a motherboard cable. That's this long one here that goes onto the motherboard, 24 pin on one side. Um, you're gonna need that cable. Then we want a CPU cable, which is the cable that's got red on one side, and then it's got two four pins on the other side here. Let me go this way so you'll see it a bit better. So, two four pins, you're gonna need one of these. And 
This is a Sator power. We don't need that one. Okay, um, so let me just check one of these things here. Yeah, no problem. Can I actually pull that a little bit right there? Alrighty, righty, righty. So we need um, all of the red cables pull out, every single one of the cables that's red. You pull out and then the rest of it you can put in and then you've got the long cable as well. So what you need is CPU power, GPU power and then motherboard power really. If you've got some other things on the case you might um, want to use some other you know power cables there as well. And does this come with any of the... Um... No. Um, Get the zip ties out here as well. Sorry, I'm just going to open the window for a little bit because it's getting incredibly hot in here. So, so, okay, uh, we'll leave the rest of it on the side. So for our CPU, if you're wondering like how many power cables do you need for your CPU? Um, like how, how do I know how, which ones do I need for the graphics card? Which ones do I need for the power supply? Now this is a, a bit of a, let's say budget power supply, even though it offers quite good range. So we saved quite a bit of cash on this one as well, trying to make it as affordable as possible while going with some of the higher end parts that actually give us performance as well but don't skip out on completely cheap power supply now this is the 80 plus platinum actually rated and um, so that will that will do us fine for now okay we'll put this fan on the side because now it's uh, I have to think about what's the right order of going about these I'm going to install them on the box here first so you take your big motherboard power cable in fact, if you go with this build, you might want to get a different power supply um, just because if you want all the features, you might um, want to use a different one. Do I have a different one for now? Do I want to go for the Corsair one or not? Do I have any? thousand watts in there no this will be fine okay this is not an sfx psu so you plug in the cables that go not the 24 pin but the other side will go to this here now i know this might sound a little bit crazy like understanding this when doing it for the first time but basically understanding which way power moves helps you to get these as well so you can't really go wrong here because this doesn't go in there. The pins won't line up. So we, we've put that one in there. Then you're going to take the red ones here. Okay. And. Well, 
what you can do is plug them into any of the red pods here okay doesn't really matter which one goes to where just there we go just populate all the red ones And um, just so you know, there is right now the red cables that we're plugging in there. There's like two separate ones, right? One of them has this six plus two, like two of these in the end. And then the other one has um, either four plus four or just solid eight on these. The four plus four and solid eight, they are for your CPU. And then the six plus two are for your GPU. Okay, I'll just make some space here now. Throw these away. Always trying to keep it as clean as we can when we're building. It just helps you understand what the heck's going on. Okay, the case. The G. Um, so for the case accessories, there's also power supply screws. If your power supply doesn't have them, you can get them out now as well. Put these all on the side for now. Okay, and then let's go. here okay so the back of this has uh, a power supply shroud so you can undo these two thumb screws uh, they're not so much thumb screws sometimes when you're doing it for the first time might need a little help for the power supply uh, with your screwdriver but when you open this know which way does it line up here you can have the power supply draw in the coal there from the bottom or from the top of the case that's slightly hotter so the how can I show you this so the air either can come on the bottom of the case because there's a grill in here as well pull the air in from the top there and then out from the back here or it can pull it from the bottom and then out from there and then I think this can go both ways right yeah so we can just take this here now and the power supply screws there's four of these and then put this bracket on the back of the power supply here you can see screws will line up and then screw it in Daniel, hi, nice to see you. I've seen your comments. Does this PSU come with the ATX 3.0 compatibility? No. Maybe perhaps that's why it was cheap, but we can still make it work. Okay, so now the power supply is in. I want to put it in sliding so that the fan will be facing downwards. So it will go in just like that. So I want to take these, all these cables first. And then 
then push them through and then out from the side. Okay. And then now screw in these two screw thumb screws. Might be a bit easier with the screwdriver. Alrighty. Okay. And then power supply is installed. Leave that one off for now. Okay. So now. Let's put some, now because the power supply is in, the case starts to become a bit heavier. So we'll start to put some cables through now on one side. So find the cables that are for your CPU, which are this here. So we've got the four plus four. Okay. And then we've got this eight pin here. By the way, you really can get away with just the eight pin because that provides enough power, uh, plenty of power really for your CPU. But let me see if there's a more optimal route for this. Yeah, we have to there. Okay, so both of these you want to put through on the top there. Okay. So this is going to be a little bit of a tight fit. Perhaps we can go around there like that. Push this through and then push the other one through as well to this hole on the top. So both of these are CPU cables. Okay. They've come through. Don't worry about the back for now. We'll just push them through and then I'll show you what to do next. Then also take the power supply cable, uh, sorry, motherboard cable, that's the big 24 pin, and push it through that hole there. Alrighty. Leave it hanging on the other side. Um, okay, might as well show you all the other cables as well, what to do with them, and where do they go. Then we flip the case the other way. And then you can see it all. So there are two cables coming from the case that have, one of them has these, how many pins are there? Two, four, six, eight, ten. So 20 pin, this one here, that's um, called USB 3.0 Type A front panel header. So those USB ports in there, we're gonna to have to connect them to the motherboard. And then this one here, this funny looking header, push it back a bit. This funny looking header is the USB C front panel header. So both of these you want to push through the same hole in there, okay? From the top, underneath the big 24 pin, just push them through and then leave them hanging on the other side for now. Then there is these four tiny little headers. You're going to want to push them through from there's a hole underneath just over here. So this is the if you if I, I'll put my finger on through for the other side. Okay. Oh, perhaps actually in here is better. So push them through that rubber grommet, these tiny little four little little pins, screws. Okay, push them through there. Let me see the fan headers. We'll put them through, there's two in there, one in there. Okay, that will go there. Okay, so these two headers that come from the front um, we want to connect them together, okay? 
So take one of the males and connect it to the other female. Doesn't matter which way you're going to go. But then this female now is going to be the signal input where signal is going to go. So I want to push that one through um, this bottom rubber, rubber grommets there as well. So basically what we have done now is the front two intake fans that you can see in the front. We connected them signal together so we can send the same signal and then get like fan speed out of one fan header basically in there and uh, makes it a little bit simpler. And then there is another cable header that says HD audio. What you want to do with that one is push it through this bottom bit in there. Now this is a little bit of a very tight there, but it will go. There we go. It just goes through there and then leave it hanging in there. I'll show you what to do next with these. And then these three cables, we're going to push through the top there. And then pull them out from the front all the way on the other side and then now that's fine okay put the case back down flat like that okay let's go here and now i can show you how to plug in everything everywhere else okay whoa Accidentally had it on five. I'm very sure Technotis would recommend an Intel like he uses one too. Not sure what the conversation there is. I must have missed it there, but uh, I am using Intel too. I'm using the same CPU, uh, same contact frame, different cooler, but um, I've been gathering some data and using it for the past six weeks now, I think, maybe more. Uh, everyday daily usage absolutely hammering it um, in creative applications rendering video editing uh, photo editing not so much but that's uh, what it's been doing so we'll take the big 24 pin cable first here and there's this 24 pin on the motherboard there make sure you line the pins up properly and there's a notch on one side of the cable make sure that lines up with that notch on the motherboard and then it's as simple as just turn it around lining up push it in make sure that your notch does go around there and clip in and there we go now there is another little six pin header on this motherboard as well it's not necessary to plug it in but if you do what you will get is you can get extra front USB-C like fast charging if you want that but you need extra um, you know cables and headers from your motherboard uh, sorry from the power supply to do that um, this is not necessarily so we're not gonna do that. Actually, now I'm noticing that it might have been better using this on the other one, but it's all right, it can be here as well. So next, we're gonna plug in the front USB-C header. So that's gonna go into there, right? This funny looking header. It looks a bit like a T if you look down there, but it's got funny um, bits. So you try, see which way it lines up. I always get it one way or the other way. Oh. Perfect. This time went straight away first time the right way. It will clip in, but this isn't very easy to get loose. So just last thing what I would do is still check that this is plugged in because it can come loose a bit easier. And then we've got this here. So that's the front type A panel. And as you can see, this is um, the port there that you want to plug it in. But this one be much more careful. This I think you, you have to be very, very careful. I have actually bent bins, pins on the motherboard by type trying to plug this in just because it goes a little bit on an angle or something like that um, you know make sure that you've completely straight there we go and once you hear it go in it just clicks in and there we go actually now I'm seeing look it, it would have been better if I went down from the bottom rubber grommets so I'm not gonna plug it in because it will be better if I plugged it in there the cable will go straighter and will be neater so I'm gonna plug it in later on so now there is the fan cables that we pulled in the front fans we're gonna be plugging them in in the bottom there so it's the same type of fan that we plugged in on the top 
USB, um, sorry, the um, cooler fans there. And then I'll pull them tight on the other side later on. Then there's these power switches and all these here. Now, remember we had this little header from the motherboard. Now it's time to take that one out. The mobile I have in general, D source about audio depends how much you want, um, like the very high quality audio on the motherboard. It's usually completely fine. But just so you know, the front panel audio often what comes from the front is lower quality than what you get from the back of the motherboard. Um, just so you know. So what we want to do now is this little header here and these here power LEDs and power switches. You just line them up um, in here. Okay, so the reset, just find the ones that you have. You will have the power switch that goes on the bottom there. By the way, power switch and reset switch, it doesn't matter whether plus is where and which one is plus and minus. It will work both the other way, but the LEDs, the plus and minus, do matter. So we're just going to put the minus into power LED minus and power LED plus. We can plug them in there and then now we can take this header and that will line up in the bottom corner just over there and then it is done there we go now I can pull them tight on the other side. Remember we also had this um, front panel audio that we pushed through on the bottom there. This header goes on the very bottom header there. It says AAFP on my mind there. But all you have to do is, so this is a bit of a tight fit on this case. Push it in, pop it in, front panel audio. So now you get the microphone and headphone combo jack in there working. Okay. <clears throat> last bit what we have to do is these cpu headers on the bot bottom corner there can you see there they will go move the case perhaps you can see it a bit better here so there we go these headers there they'll they're gonna have to go in there okay i'm gonna put the four pin in first Same type of thing, um, just find out where the clip is and make sure that it goes in the right direction. And then make sure it's, it actually clicks and goes in and is not loose. Okay, both of these in there. Now we can take the case, pop it up. And then now on the other side of the case, you can just pull the cables a bit through while looking on that side of the case, making sure that your cables are still plugged in, but you can push them a bit tight so that the excess will go on the back of the case. Remember, this is the cable that we wanted to push a little bit lower. So this was the front panel type A header. Plug it in now again. Okay, goes in there. These fan headers, I'll pull them a bit more tight. Okay. So make sure that you're not pulling anything out when you pull them tight on this side. Do this like that. Okay, that's there. The CPU head is there as well. Pull them tight. Okay, and then what else did we have to plug in? Was there anything else? No CPU. That. That. Okay. Um, and then now the back fan. Oh. I know they're tight on there, so we're gonna put the black back fan in. And then there is a fan header on just underneath there underneath the cooler so I'd like to get the fan cable like up 
underneath this fan. So I might have to take that fan off for now. I can clip it off just like that. So I can get the fan cable through. The fan goes in the back of the case just like that. Alright. I'm going to put it as high as I can so that the hot air will go out from the back of the case. Take some screws. As you can see, the aesthetics of this uh, build are going to be absolutely awesome. Screwdriver, yeah, here. I'm not sure if this is capable now, so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. You can see you can put it anywhere here, but I'm going to. Yeah, Black Friday should be November. I can see people jetting there. Okay. Now with this back of the case you can move the fan like bottom and higher, remember this is the top of the case right, but I want to move it as high as I can because that's where the hot air naturally is on the top of the case naturally there and I want to exhaust it out, I want to exhaust it out, I don't have any on the top of the case now we could add some more fans in there but I think this is plenty for now, the other hot air will naturally just go out from there. But if we put it slightly lower, it's just like physics, you know, we're, we're pushing the a bit lower air out. But now, just whatever is on the high there, we're just going to be pushing that out. Um, and then now we'll take the, the cable for that and I'll push it underneath that fan there. Okay. It goes from there, there's headers just underneath there. I'm gonna pop it in there. Okay, hide the excess just somewhere underneath there. And then we'll put the the cooler fan back now. Okay, so as you can see, we've kind of hidden that cable there. I can uh, push it a bit more tight there, making it look like that. And then the other cable will just be kind of just hidden underneath that there. But there is another little, where is it now? There's a little rubber a header or something that you can put on the screw hole that's on the motherboard box. Let me see if I can find it. Did I take it out already? Don't think I did. It's just a little kind of sticker thing. Okay, here. Sorry, my uh, mouse just went flying on the other side. Okay, I'll get it later. So on the motherboard box, there is just this little 
a random thing. Just aesthetics, I guess. Okay. We'll open it up, you'll see what I mean. Pelakalian, hi. I detect northeast accent, but I can't place where. Exactly. So this little uh, rubber grommet, a rubber thing, it just goes onto that hole there, and then you pop it in there. I've got no idea why you need it, but it's there for that. You know, I guess aesthetics gives you extra 200 megahertz on the CPU and GPU. While we've got it lied down like that, let's install our GPU and people should be getting excited now because this is an RTX 4090. This is from Gigabyte. This is the Gigabyte Gaming OC. And this was one of the most affordable at the time of buying the parts. Uh, and it's very good quality as well. Um, this does come with the four eight pin um, you know, headers. We've got only three cables, but we're gonna pigtail one, which is not ideal, but let me pull it this way. One of these cable is rated at 150 watts, which can actually pull much more. Sometimes it's more, but three of these cables can easily pull 450 watts, right? And then you get another 75 watts from the slot. So we're already 525 watts, but this card is rated only 450 watts. So we can easily peak tail two of these together. And it's going to be fine. Not ideal, like I said, but sometimes you have to do that to make compromises, but it's completely fine. Alrighty. This big fella here. There is actually GPU support there as well, which um, I might actually install because it is a big fella. I'll have to double check how to uh, install. Ooh, yes, uh, this is in fact very good GPU support. I'll show you how to do that as well. I've never installed it, but that is very, very good the way it works. So you've got these little screws, standoffs that come with with the um, GPU, right? And basically, we're gonna have to install these onto this motherboard standoffs. So let me double check. Right, so. There's two types of standoffs that come with it. One of them that has a bit thicker uh, thread and then one of them that has a bit. Okay, we need these washers as well. So take two washers. Okay, and we're gonna have to undo these two screws there. We'll undo that screw and then the bottom screw here. And then we take these um, standoffs there. You can just double check that it is like the same thread on the screw, which will be. Then what you want to do is get one of those washers, put it on the standoff. Go on, go in. And then that standoff then will slide in there. It does have actually a screw hole, so you can screw it screw it in there boom so it will hold the motherboard down but also give us like this Ooh, let me see if that's gonna fit oh, yeah it goes the other way so there we go and then let's do the same on the other side hammered be an easy is is this ddr5 build yes ddr5 Someone says 1490s are super crazy expensive and 
I do I do agree with you. At the same time, 4090s are the ones that make the most sense out of the pricing of 40 series. Um, if you want a card that's got the best bang for buck, the 4090 is just out of this world. It's so much better than the rest of it, and it it's just it just makes sense. Okay, so now we've done that. Then let's see which one, which way does it go? Oh yeah. So now this. Ooh. It's not going to fit in this way. Let me see. Yeah, very interesting. I might have to look at that. Can you see how it doesn't fit? We're going to start to hit the front front panel there. Let me see what can we do. What if we move the fan? Does it line up? Yep, if it goes there. So we'll move the top fan up a bit. And then the bottom fan down a bit, and then we should be able to slot it in there. Okay. Okay, someone says Noctua somewhere. Not a Noctua. 4080 to be honest i'm a bit disappointed on the nocto 4080 as much as they did engineering like underneath the hood and have more heat pipes than the tough and that i honestly see no point in that that it looks a little bit copy paste uh, from the previous generation and like the idea is copy paste from the previous one even though the design underneath isn't copy paste if you know what i mean but it doesn't perform any better than any of the other ones it provides like quieter performance but it's so fine at 100% utilization or something like that I'd, I mean it's so 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 niche product that it for like 99.9% .9 of people I don't see it make sense am I using anti-static mat no not really really it's just a leather um, desk mat but it's completely fine to actually kill any of your compute computer components um, because of anti-static or like with static I'm not sure if you've seen that video Linus did it's very hard to do okay let's screw these in now before I screw it back interesting it still doesn't want to want to go in really this anti sag bracket it doesn't really work on this case wait a second I oh, know that's for that let me just double check if, if the fractal GPU bracket somehow built in here as well because sometimes a day do the voice is weird. Uh, let me see. They've got some kind of tricks for GPU sag.
no no GPU support so we're gonna have to find something externally uh, we can't quite put this back so you know sometimes one step forwards two steps back or two steps forwards one step back AK620 is okay to cool the 13600K. Yes, I think you'll be fine. Any RGB for this build? Not really. The only RGB will be on the GPU slightly, and I might turn that one off as well. So it will be kind of just black aesthetics. Um, maybe you can put some, I don't know, maybe yellow is too much these rubber pads on there I just leave everything like black no RGB for this one let me know if you dig that design choice so the GPU sack bracket for this particular case doesn't fit and you might have to buy something uh, from Amazon like a standoff thing that will just stand on this bit here and will hold it up but let's put the GPU in we're going to take, let me see how many slots is it in the back? Two slot one. So we'll take the second and the third slot off from here. Okay, put the screw on the side. Third slot off as well. Okay, then you're going to take your GPU and sometimes you might have a protector on this which I have already taken off on this slot so make sure that your slot here is covered or uncovered sorry and then this is just going to slot in to there if you know what I mean okay so we're going to take this here it's a very nicely tight fit and I'll have to bend that over just to check that it's going to the right place okay and once you're making sure that it does go into the slot there we go it's gone in oh one more thing forgot so to get it out there's a nice little button there and then you can pull the GPU out. There's a little sticker on this uh, chipset. Pull that one out because that will just hold a little bit of heat and we don't want any thermals there. And then do the same. I'll just try to go on the side so you can see what I'm doing. Line it up in there. Okay. There we go. It's gone in. As you can see, it fits nicely a lot of the case. And because we've got this panel coming in here as well, which will cover most of this gigabyte stuff. So, this is nice. Okay. These two screws in there as well. Sometimes, just a tip here, when you start to put these screws in the back of the GPU, you think, but heck, it's not lining up. Then the back of the case often is a bit bendy. Just bend the back of the case and move the GPU. Just make the screws align. And then, boom. You've got it working. So, that's that now. So now what you have to do is take this um, adapter. NVIDIA adapter that takes this high power 12 volt um, they say 600 watts but this GPU doesn't pull 600 watts what you want to do is make sure that the adapter is completely plugged in so that because that's can be a hazardous thing there if you don't have it completely plugged in it's half plugged in that's the worst thing the kind of a cable a bend here isn't as bad as what we've seen tested and then now take these cables that you had from coming out from the side we're gonna take two of them and then plug it in okay one in there we're gonna have to take one that goes 
to two of them. Okay. And then we're going to get another one here. Don't piggy tail the other one. So make sure that you do have three separate cables um, going in there. I'm actually going to put it the other way. I'm going to put it to the longer one. This is, it's a different cable, but I'll just use the longer one. And then the longer one. Doesn't matter which one do you use in the chain of the cable here, if that makes sense. Because, like, if you look at that cable, there is one in here and one on the other. Both of them get power there, like, connected together. So whether you connect it to this one or the other one. So now... Oh. Okay, we've got these cables down there. Uh, oh. Forgot to screw that in. Okay, um, let's see if I can. Can I screw it in underneath there? Perhaps, but uh, not really. Well, maybe, maybe I can. Uh, remember to screw your front fans in if you haven't yet Ugh, okay I'll have to take it off take the cable off here okay you can see the GPU heats sink from space someone is saying okay that's out that's out we'll press the button there pull the GPU out put it there and then let's fix our fan screws there so that doesn't go in there put the bottom fan as low as you can well actually no, I want it. GPU will be fine. So I'm gonna put it there. Now, since we didn't put the sag bracket in, I'll just pull the top one back down again. Alrighty, cables in, GPUs going back. There we go. See, I had to bend the back of the bracket here as well to get it fully lining up with the screws. take this power cable again here push it in make sure it's properly in okay and as you can see there is a bit of sag from this angle you can see this GPU is a little bit jack sagging 
Um, and then the BIOS switch makes sure, sure this is on the OC so it will be a bit faster, right? And then we'll just pull these cables all to down there. Pull them down there. And what we want to do is get the cover that goes in here. I'm gonna slide it up there. Slide it backwards this way. And then you can tighten it up from here. And then now these cables look. That's that's not even that bad bad of a bend here of this cable. I'll just bend them slightly, but. This is completely fine. Alrighty, once you have done this, you are pretty much getting to the end now. And in a moment, we're gonna start to plug it in and do a first test boot. But before we're gonna do that, we've gotta do something here. Back here, which is the cable management. Okay, get your zip ties, what you had there before. And then let's try to sort these out in here okay i'm gonna put one zip tie in there all right okay i want to put oh look there's a fan hub that's already built into this case as well interestingly i think this big is because we had Oh yeah, okay. The fan hub cable off, I got scared that I plugged in the wrong cable. That's the fan hub cable, so if you have loads of fans in here, you can just put them in the fan hub and that will work as well. But right now, I'm just putting the zip tie there to tighten these cables there. And then take another one. Put it there. Okay, let's see if there's any question. Now, buy cable mod adapters. Yes, that's another option there to get the adapter. Or if you've got a power supply that's got already the 16 pin high power watt cable or 12 volt high power cable, then you can uh, just use that one as well. Okay. Actually, the the better thing to do here now would be if you had, because you don't want to zip tie them down just in case something is somewhere wrong. So what we're gonna do now is I'll just move this out of the way and we'll we'll do straight away a test boot here to see if everything is there. So the way we I'd like to do that is I'll just put that one in there. I've got an HDMI here. I'll plug that in the back of the GPU. I've got a keyboard here. I'm going to plug that one in there. Keyboard, who's ready for the test boot? Will this be an ideal door build as well? Overkill for door. The CPU, maybe not, but the GPU for a door build, absolutely overkill. So I've got a power cable in here already ready as well so this goes in the back of your power supply maybe i should show you this as well just so you know what's going on okay here so what cables are we plugging in there okay so all of your display ports and all of your kind of um, cables for screens, displays, will go onto the GPU, right? You've got your HDMI display ports in there. If you want video output, you could also get it from GPU to the motherboard and then you can get it out from the USB-C as well. It should work with integrated graphics as well, already there as well, so USB-C video output. 
but then all your peripherals you plug in there and the Wi-Fi antenna you can see two uh, golden headers in the back there uh, you can just plug them in there but now the power supply cable goes in there so I'm gonna plug it in there and then flick it on so I'll put it this way so you can see we'll plug it in on the bottom and then whack this on so the power supply is on now in theory if I press the power button on the top it should turn on let's see voila it is turning on I'm gonna put it a bit sideways so you can see the colors of these on the motherboard there I'll put this there so now this is the power or sorry the video output from the GPU so we can see the yellow light in there what that means is now it's checking the RAM and it might do it a few times it will stay on yellow until it goes to next one is white which we starts to check the GPU or VGA and then it goes to green which means post and booting okay look it checked the RAM white checking the GPU it went off interesting okay all the fans are spinning as well that's a good sign Check in the RAM, as you can see, yellow light there. Okay, white check in the GPU. White light, can you see the white light there? I'll just put it in. Okay, and now boot. Come on. Voila, look at that. We're getting a post. As you can see there, we've got it installed. Let's hit F1. And then we're going to have the BIOS here. Okay. As you can see, wait a second, let me put myself in the bottom corner there. We have the BIOS version is quite early, so we want to get that updated straight away. We've got 13th gen 13900K installed. RAM, look at that, is going there. XMP is disabled. So first thing what we want to do is ins update the BIOS. So let me see if I can show you this straight away here on on the other one. Because you need another... Another another port. Okay, I'll show you here. What what will we do next? Um, I'm gonna plug my USB into the different PC, and then one second. I dropped my mouse, so I'll go get my mouse. Okay, fix the screen. What's the screen? What's wrong with the screen? Screen size. What do you mean? Everything's fine. I know, I'm small. I just want to show you the BIOS because I need to show you this. Okay. Uh, oh, I might actually have this one here. I'll just show you regardless. Let me see if we can go here. Um, okay. Okay, double checking if I can have
two seconds. Hey, okay, there we go. I'm not on mute anymore. I'm not on mute anymore. Okay, I've got it sorted. I've got it sorted. Um, sorry, it was a different scene, so that's why I couldn't couldn't see it. Ah. Uh. Guy's been talking to myself, Luke. A oh, little, uh, hey. Why are you breaking my balls? Uh, okay. There we go. That's where we get to the BIOS here. Look at that. That's released a few days ago. 09, this one here. Do, 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 do. We're going to download that. I'm going to show it in folder. Right click, extract all. I'm going to extract it. All you want to do is copy that and then we're gonna to go to the USB stick I'm gonna paste it in there okay I've got something else in there so I'm gonna delete that so make sure that you the only thing you have on the um, drive there is is this right so then now once we've got that drive clicked in there and just double check it there okay put you guys back in here and then now we're gonna pull this from there plug it in the back of the PC or in the front of the PC doesn't matter here as well I'll show you okay and then we'll go here okay we're back on the other PC BIOS right the PC that we just built now what we want to do now is I'm gonna hit F7 if I remember correctly Yes, so F7, and then we uh, we're gonna go to Tool, and then ASUS Flash there. And as you can see already, it's found the storage, my storage USB there, and it's got that file that we just copied into there. So we're gonna click on that. It says, yeah, BitLocker, blah blah blah. We're gonna go yes. Do you want to read this file? Yes. Do you really want to update the BIOS? Yes. And then now it's basically updating the BIOS. Uh, but, 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 it's annoying when you start up your PC and the sound doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to look at the, some of the questions now there because uh, we've got to wait a little bit for this BIOS to update. So you just see everything live, how we do now, the Windows as well. By the way, you might want to already make yourself a Windows install stick, which I have here, Windows 11. I'm going to show you how to install that as well and how to get past no internet um, option there. And where was our... Oh, yeah. All righty. Uh, this is the Wi-Fi antenna. Technotis, can't you just update the BIOS after you install Windows or is it better to update beforehand? I just do it the first thing, like you start from the, you can do it later as well, it doesn't matter. But I start from like the lowest systems, right? You've got BIOS is what works with your hardware and whatever. And so I'm going to update that first. Oh, not seeing that slightly. An angle there, alrighty. Um, update the BIOS and then move on to installing Windows and everything ready so I'll, I'll get everything ready in BIOS first I mean this is already so quiet here the fan curves and everything I might just leave the fan curves however they are on BIOS because this is going quite well uh, what we can do whilst it's doing that optimize the BIOS yeah let's let's go for it next thing Someone says, Luke is saying that he installed the fan on the radiator backwards. I'm going to put some of these pieces back now together. So the top panel goes back. And the front panel we can put back on as well. By the way, the front panel has a dust filter on this side. So, yeah, that's the upper bit. Push that in. 
clip that on the back. One of the scariest thing in the world is updating the BIOS. Um, it's all right. Okay, I'll do the this a bit later. Okay. Alrighty. Um, I'm not going to touch the back right now yet, just because, just in case I move the power cables, you don't want to lose the power while updating the BIOS, because that's uh, a bit crazy. By the way, I'm not sure if you noticed, but I should be streaming at 4k and that's due to because um i installed the 4070 asus to 4070 for the pc that's streaming here right now and i'm streaming in av1 which means that i can save on uh, the internet bandwidth and get still very very high quality fo footage um Okay, what's going on? We have no fear messing with the PC while BIOS updates. Yep. This live will be available later. Yes, this will be published on the channel. You can just, you have to find it on the live videos there, but it will, I will leave it there so people can come back to it and see how to do it. When BIOS updates, I'm praying it doesn't brick. Oh yeah, it feels scary, but it's all right as well. Okay, update successful. Press enter. It's going to restart now. Is it best to go into BIOS to update it or flash BIOS with a USB without CPU and RAM installed? It's fine. By the way, you can BIOS flashback also uh, with the CPU and all the components installed as well if you wanted to. But you have to rename the BIOS and sometimes, um, you know, if you don't know how to do that, the actual file, it has to be a certain file that you update in there. Oh, interesting, it doesn't restart itself. I'll just have to turn it on myself. But um, once you rename it, you can just pop it in the back of this and hit the go and then it will, you know, do it. But I just like to visually see what's going on. Like I can see the bar going, I can see that, okay, it's done, it's restarted. If I just update it there in the back, I don't know what's happening. Something flashing then stops, it starts, so... That's fine. There's a big delay with streaming in 4K. Yeah, I thought about the delay at 4K, but I, uh, what's what's the, let me see what's the, it's gonna have to restart many times now. Just wanna check what color is it. There, okay, yellow, checking the RAM. You might have to press it or turn it on a few times. Interestingly, for some reason, this PC right now is not restarting itself. It's like turns it off rather than restarting, which is interesting. In case something goes bad, we see it 4K. Yeah, 3900K, no problem. Okay, let's turn it back on. Does it turn itself back on? No. It's It just trains the memory so many times. We'll see what it does. As you can see, it's on the yellow again there. I'll go this screen so you'll see it big. Yellow light. Okay, and now checks VJ. Yep. Look at that. I've 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 had the same motherboard build. I've built like few PCs with the same motherboard, same CPU. As you can see, okay, we're there quickly. Let me see. There we go. BIOS is updating, not shutting down. So that's what it shows us here. But it's basically um, for some reason it's not 
pulling it into a restart mode, if you know what I mean. Usually what it does is just restarts itself a few times, a few times. But I just had to physically um, turn it on there. Let me see. I don't know. Okay, yellow. Check in RAM. You think it's a bit noisy? Someone is saying, can you hear the fans? Okay, what are, what are we checking next? Look, white means VGA, green means post, and boom. Okay, let's have a look at this. Um, what is it saying? The most according to the F1 convention. If you wish to follow into guidelines, apply its stockpile limits. Oh, interesting. Asus has put this now in here as well. Um, disable the MCE in BIOS settings if you wanted to do that. So we're going to go F1. I'm just very, very close to here to the fans, like the microphone is far, far away from there. Okay. There we are in BIOS. So, what do we do first here? Let me just put it here so it's a bit bigger and I can look straight in here. Oh. Okay. What I would do is enable XMP, right? Come on. The, the mouse is always a bit weird in there. Okay. You can do fan control uh, on there. If you don't know how to do that, um, have a look at my guide on how to optimize fans, right? Another thing we're going to do is hit F7 again. We're going to go AI tweaker. Let's have a look if they've got XMP tweaked. Oh, yeah. Look at that. What you can do now here is XMP tweaked. If you hit that one, it's basically that Asus on the board has already tested this exact memory kit because they know that you've installed this one and they have tuned it even further to get even more optimization out there. So you can get the XMP tweaked out if you want. XMP2 is what the memory, memory manufacturer has loaded on the RAM kit. And you can add that one. And then XMP1 is like ASUS uh, BIOS optimized, I think. Yeah, that's like the optimized one. I'm going to go tweaked. We'll see if that one works there. So multi-core enhancement. That's when we let this CPU pull like loads of power. We're going to go enforce all limits because we're going to pull only 253 watts so we're not going to let don't pull all of that uh, power you know because otherwise it's going to pull more than 300 watts um we're going to leave it at that and then see how it does if it's loads of power left in there maybe we've got a really good silicon lottery we might enable it as well there but it's fine next we want to go to system agent configuration yeah graphics configuration iGPU multi-monitor and we're gonna go enabled so we can get the iGPU working as well and we can get, um, utilize like quick sync and some of these things there and rest of the things I just leave the same we're gonna hit F10 which means save and press OK and then there we go yes yeah, someone is saying yep tweaked is the best Again, why is it not pulling it into the restart mode? Why do I have to turn it on? That is so random. That's the first time I've ever seen this do on the PC. Whenever it restarts, it's not restarting. You just have to press the button, which is interesting. Is Tweak the best for AM5 too? Ooh. Well, that's a bit of a hot topic right now uh, because of the AMD and ASUS and what's going on and tweaked because they might put a bit more voltage in there. But on Intel system, I would say yes. On AMD, whoo, I don't know. 
Would other mobile manufacturers have same settings? Uh, kind of, yeah. Well, the XMP1 and 2 will be the same, but then they might not have the tweaked one. That's like what Asus just gives extra. Okay, there we go. Already booted, and the XMP worked as well. Uh, all right. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to pull in my uh, Windows install stick. So if you don't know how to make this, there's a video on the channel, right? I'm going to pop it in there as well. So you see that I've got it installed and then we're going to hit F10. It's going to restart it again. It's going to see that there's Windows installed there and then we're going to install Windows. What I'm also going to show you is how to get past in like logging into the um, like Microsoft account and how to get past that. Let me just double check the command. What was it? Uh, just double check what was the, uh, yeah, there we go. Let's put that one in there. So I can see that. Alrighty. Okay, look at that. Come on. Let's have that Windows logo there. There we go. So now we're going to go Windows there, United Kingdom, United Kingdom. We're going to go next. Install now. Ramesh is saying BIOS iGPU enabled is enabled the Intel iGPU. Yes. It's turned off by default, usually on BIOS. Um, and just because it's meant for you know gaming at first because you don't want to use the iGPU because you've got the RTX 1490 which is not actually true the iGPU has extra power for creators because it's got better Cortex support but here activate Windows I don't have a product key you can always activate it later just put no and then we're gonna go 11 Windows 11 Pro uh, not Pro N and we're gonna go next accept next customized and now you can see two drives there remember we installed the one terabyte drive on the upper slot which is connected to the cpu and that's where we want to install the windows so we're going to click on that one and then we're going to go next and then it copies windows onto that drive and pretty much we've just installed windows let's let's see what's going on um will the 4070 price drop if 4060 released 4060 Ti will come first, but uh, probably um, soon. There's some rumors of the 4060 Ti. Can't say nothing for sure yet. But uh, that's coming first. We don't know, yeah. 4060 price acts as a bar. Yeah, could do that, yeah. Uh, Michael is saying, "What about 12700K and GTX 1060?" No, we wouldn't get, wouldn't get to toasty. Let's see now if the Windows restart will work on this. Just put myself in the top corner there. Yeah. What is this? Windows restart works, but Asus BIOS restart doesn't work. That's the most random thing I've ever seen. There must be some kind of glitch in the BIOS. Um, I don't know why this is. Okay, now we can see how to install the Windows. Just wait a little bit. I'll show you how to make the local account here. Yeah. Just two seconds. Don't worry. You don't have to. You don't have to uh, sign into Microsoft. I'll show you. Getting ready. Getting ready. Guess we could clean up this place a little bit. These were the hard drive covers. Did you hear that? Okay, I'll 
put the back PCIe covers on the case accessories case as well. Okay. That's that. Jeez, that's going to... What Intel CPU, Ramesh? Okay, there we go. I'll show you what to do next now. Okay, hit enter, United Kingdom. Yeah, go on. United Kingdom, go on then, give us that. Skip keyboard layout, don't need that. Now it says, let's connect you to our network, okay? What you want to do is go Shift F10 boom it's going to bring out this and what you want to type in there is o o b e and then backslash oh, pants, come on uh, there we go there we go o o b e a backslash there we go you go bypass n r o okay and then hit enter and it's going to restart and check this out now uh, for me ambient temperature in this room is 26 degrees 26.1 degrees shows that look it's going to restart and then check this out is there any performance difference someone is saying there chipset on motherboard slot there will be a bit of a latency there, but not noticeable. But what you want to do is like the OS and programs to be like connected as fast as the CPU so that when it pulls data, it doesn't have to go slightly longer because all the little latencies will add up. In BIOS, it's 40 plus C temp with Noctua air cooler. We'll see how, how it does. 40 C usually is quite all right, even what I'm seeing liquid coolers there as well, but, but we'll see. had a call of nature that I miss anything nothing much just to show you how to get past the internet connection and how you can get local account look at that UK United Kingdom skip and watch this now I don't have internet now this is what you can do there you didn't have that option previously continue with limited setup you're gonna get that and you don't have to sign in to make Microsoft account. You're giving a big uh, middle finger to Microsoft. Sorry, Microsoft. But enter your name. We're going to go uh, and type this Z790 Pro Art. Oh, I don't think I can have a space in between there. Next, password. Here's what I do. It's a great question. Zero. Enter. Arrow down. Tab. Zero. Enter. Arrow down. Tab. Zero. Enter. There we go. Location. No thanks. No thanks. Required only. It's just basically no, no, no. Use someone else's data in some big corporate systems, but not mine. Thanks. Nope. Everything just no. All right. And check this out now. You don't have to sign into Microsoft account. There we go. Voila, we are on Windows. So you'll never have to sign into Microsoft, and then it's gonna ask you another million questions. Just say now nah, local account, thanks. See you later. Over in Australia, RTX 4090 prices have dropped substantially. I purchased a tough OC for 3200 in Chen. It's now 27, 2700 Canadian dollars. That's quite low. 
load of 1490 cards have been the price dropped 1496 was 37 no 31 goodness me that's pretty good almost there come on come 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 there we go first thing is gonna say download armory crate and land driver and I'm gonna say no first of all I'm gonna have to log into Windows there because uh, sorry I'll have to log in to get some kind of a internet connection going so yes okay we're on the internet now so now you can connect to internet don't connect yourself previously we're gonna download the driver and all that okay one thing we're gonna straight away go to Microsoft so I'm gonna start pulling lots of stuff there let me show you how I set up windows and things as well this is half of PC building right so Cinebench that's what's gonna help us get that okay yeah sign without data don't allow okay don't allow there we go and then we're gonna go uh, hardware info 64 yep that's what we want Uh -huh. It's downloading that. Where do we go? Let's go on that corner. Okay. Uh, first thing what we want to do is hit start key. Check for updates. Yes. Let those Windows updates go. I'm going to install the Wi-Fi antenna as well because I'm going to get better. I don't think you exactly saw what I typed on the keyboard. But you're welcome to know my password if you want. It's, uh, it's the only different password. So there we go. Installing the Wi-Fi antenna. It's magnetic as well, by the way. I understand yes okay let's see how's the Windows install doing again don't restart until it's downloaded and c completed a whole ton of these okay so where was our hardware info here again let's get that installed Build computer one hour, install OS one hour, uh, updating Windows four days later. Okay, sensors only. Now we can see if the PC is correctly going. Actually, do you know what? I've got this filter on here, that's why it's a bit. Where is it? Okay, is that better? There we go. That took it a bit too much. 
Now you can see a bit better. Uh, ba, 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 ba. How fast is your download speed? I might want to connect to your Wi Fi. <laughs> okay, don't show this warning again and continue. Okay, oh, that was the graphics driver. I thought, what the heck was going on? Do you see that go black? It was a graphics driver there. Okay, let's have a look. What's the temperatures like? We've pulled 163 watts max, and then at 77C. Let's go temperatures, max boost clocks 5.8. That's what I want to see. Um, alrighty, let's get everything set up here. Armory crate, yeah, let that do that. Don't hit restart until it's done everything, installed everything there as well. Armory crate as well, installing all sorts of things. It's good. Oh great, armory crate, the most legal malware you can have. Yes, but there are some benefits why I'm installing this and I'll show you in a moment. Okay, what's inside of hardware info is important to look for. Alrighty. Let's have a look then. So hardware info is basically um, a program that will show you everything, how your hardware is working. All the sensors that are all over the motherboard, CPU, GPU, RAM, everywhere. We can read them through this program. It's free for everyone to download and then just put sensors only. So here's what we can see on the top here. You can see how much RAM, for example, has been use it, um, utilized here. You can see physical memory used. We've used maximum 10 gigabytes there 10,500 megabytes which was 10 gigabytes but this also helps you to bottleneck some of your system if you're in a workflow for example that's what we found out that we are actually capping our RAM like we're using all of it and then our program is capped by that that was the bottleneck of this we were using like 84 at times um, gigabytes of RAM so we upgraded more then later on we see obviously we're using 86 gigabytes on 128 gigabyte kit but you can see that if you're on 64 gigabytes and you go really close to that 64 gigabyte limit you're most likely bottlenecked by this one here we can see core clock speeds right we can see what the clock speeds are all on the all of the different cores there's e cores and p cores i'm not going to go into the architectural differences but 5.8 is what it advertises for the p cores but it's only like two or three cores. I think two cores, yeah. As you can see, P cores six and seven are 5.8 there. So you can double check that, okay, we are running at those you know, clock speeds there. Then another thing what you want to check out here is the Intel core temperatures. So if you do that bigger as well, you can see individual CPU core, how hot are they? And if anything is thermal throttling, there is thermal throttling here as well. So core thermal throttling right now, it's showing no. But if you maximize this bit here, you can see every single core separately, how to, um, if it's thermal throttling or not, which cores are and so on. We're going to reopen the app. And um, then here on the CPU package here, by the way, don't look at CPU package because CPU package temperature here will show you the highest um, sensor tem thermal, thermal uh, oh, that's why it was weird. Sorry, is this better audio now? Sorry if my heart, man, I can't believe I've had this on all this time. Sorry guys, this is random. Now it's now it looks much better, doesn't it? <laughs> Goodness me, how did I have the other random mic on as well at the same time? I know I died a little when it went black. It's just in uh, window, Windows installing some of the NVIDIA drivers as well. And then when it does that, it goes black. Um, so we're going to go oh, scroll down. Agree. Yes. Which basically says, yeah, you're going to give your warranty away. No, you don't. It's, I'm just joking. Never show again. Go cancel. But what we want to do here is this little toolkit there will show us all the latest drivers so you don't have to pull them manually from the um, you know website so we're going to get all of these management engine wi-fi and all of that 
I'm gonna click download and install. So it basically installs everything and all of this automatically, everything that you need to know. It's so simple to get all the drivers sorted. Armory crate, tools, install, download all. There we go. Sounds so quiet. Okay, let me turn it up a bit. Is that better now? Okay, check, 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 check. Sounds a little bit better now. Alrighty, there we go. Sorry, I just had this random thing on there as well. It's the other microphone that was turned on as well, but now it should be a bit better in terms of, um, yeah, it should be better now. Let me know how it goes now. Is it better now? Is it better now? I can, sh let's see, better now. Too low, friend. Maybe you were just used to that bad audio that I've been, uh, that I had it going previously. Because that was too, um, too high of a microphone. Yeah, it's better now. Yeah, of course it is better. It is, I'm, I'm hitting like peaking minus 12 or minus 15, something like that. But it's, it, it is better. Okay, it's installing all of the drivers there so let it do that and then windows is doing stuff as well here everything says completed but it's pending restart i'm gonna wait for it to uh Someone hit the front door. Mm. puzzle Alrighty, um, and then what else can we see? Oh yeah, the CPU package will just show the highest temperature of any of the sensors. So that doesn't necessarily mean the cores, you know, CPU cores. CPU cores, you'll see the core temperatures, but package temperature is helpful to know as well. There are 77. Um, then core package power, we can see how much power are we pulling through the CPU. As you can see, look at this, even though this is 253 you know, TDP chip there. At idling, look at that. We're installing stuff in the background. We're using 11 watts. You're not going to see that on a Ryzen system. Maybe Ryzen 7600X because that's a single die, but as soon as it comes like dual dies, like the Ryzen 9s and things, it, it, it will never go that low. Just because a multi-chiplet dies, it uses more power and so on. Um... And then you can see the PL1 and PL2 limits. So here, as you can see, we've gapped it at 256. That's the Intel's recommended limit. So it can always pull 256. We're going to test that in a moment. How does it uh, hold up there? There's motherboard sensors there, blah, blah, blah. I don't need to know that. R really, VRMs there as well. Do, 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 do. Then there's RAM temperatures there if you want to show. That's not as important, but there is GPU, GPU temperatures. Right now, because we don't have GPU driver, it doesn't know like what to do there because there's only like what GPU temperature they pulls 46 degrees. You can see much more once the GPU driver has been installed. So while it's installing these down there, let's uh, test the cooling capabilities. Go with that. All right. Uh, my build, I started Asus ROG 7690A, gaming Wi-Fi D4, Corsair Avengers, blah, blah, blah. 3600 gate, blah, blah, blah. very good. RAM's fine. Someone says it's slow, yeah, but it's, 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 it's good. Okay, so now how do we test the temperatures? Where was our hardware info again now? Okay. So we're going to scroll all the way here where we see the packages, package power, and here gonna go file advanced benchmark because now we just want to put in the 10 minute one I'm gonna click go and then open this one here let's have a look how does it handle this okay thermal throttling there slightly but then went away again did you see that right now we're not thermal throttling so something just went quickly high P core five, but then right now it's fine again. See a new load. It starts off with thermal throttling and then goes down. So even at two hundred and fifty-three watts, 
there's one car that wants to run out, which is completely normal really at this um, rated of power what we're pulling there. 253, that's, that's a lot of watts. So if we go here, uh, where's our core temperatures? Yep. So as you can see, P-Core has gone 97 degrees and has thermal throttled. P-Core 7 there as well. Let's see if they have thermal throttled. Interesting, all of the P-Cores thermal throttle and then go away. So what's it trying to do then at first? What clock speed is it trying to run? 5.2 on all core? Uh, 5.5 at all core. But I think we're power limited. So interestingly, we do thermal throttle a little bit. Let's have a look at the score there. 33,000 with all stuff going on behind as well. Not bad. I'd say this is quite good behavior considering this is 26.4 degrees in here. Um, in England, that's quite warm. Uh, okay, three degrees C. So yes, some of the P cores do thermal throttle. As you can see, apart from P-Core 1, let me see if I can. Will I undervolt the CPU? Absolutely not. Yes, if you wanted to get like the optimal performance, but for me, the stability is much more important than getting any of this across. Okay, while it's installing that, um, we can continue doing the cable management in the back there. Just basically line them up, something like that. I think I'm just going to leave them, them there. We'll do a GPU test there as well and see if everything's fine. All righty. Let's see the back panel. Oh, let's let's cut the zip ties. Restart now. Yes. Okay. Let's restart now. You can pull the window stick out now there as well. Bunch of windows. Let's put this back panel on. Um, I could be losing performance as well because I don't have the panel the panels installed. Because right now it might be blowing the air like out from the side, which might actually compromise a bit of the performance as well. So we'll try that. Unfortunately, this is still a mesh panel. Okay. But it will still help a bit. Gentle with the GPU cables. And then need a bit of Okay. Q 
screen. Do you see that? Yep. I think we've posted. Yep. Alrighty. So now all panels are installed. Let's see. I notice a lot of tech going on around there. Yeah, what what do you see? Okay. Come on. Come on. <sighs> How are you guys doing? Any other questions? Let me know if I can help while we're waiting for this. Hello. Huh? We're starting up. Could you use the front of the case to, uh, as a cutting board, to dice some carrots? Sure thing. But look how nice this is. Okay, let's see. Uh, window. Oh, sorry. Check for updates. It's most likely gonna find some more. I promise you that much. Uh, let's click again. There we go. I knew it had some more in the sleeve. Come on then. Let's get those installed. We're going to go armory crate. Okay, let's have a look at the drivers here. So as you can see, we've updated all the drivers. So all your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, management engine, graphics, all that is installed. But what you want to do is... Um... Y and K Visuals just bought the 3700K right now. Had a 75 euro discount. That is good. Uh, why is Asus looking for incredible? It's a good question. I guess they haven't found it yet. Uh, um, what was the secret to running 1300 with air cleaning? It was bias settings? No, I'll show you. Let me see, what did we do next? Yeah, NVIDIA drivers. Got distracted by Donald Trump there. Official NVIDIA driver download. GeForce, 40 series, 4090, Windows 11. Not game ready, but studio driver, my friends, because we are creators, we want that, not the game ready drivers. Okay. We're going to go search, download, yes please. Download, 572 gigab megabytes. Let me see how much was it? 854 megabytes, whoa, it gets bigger and bigger. It's looking for incredible. Okay, okay, so we've got the graphics driver. Any other drivers, what's going on? What do we need uh, let's test um, the GPU as well what we want is fur mark downloads okay fine you can have my cookies give us the download page there we go 
okay nvidia is downloaded of course studio driver did i update the graphics drivers no it's just windows updating some random version of the graphics driver this is definitely not the biggest one the graphics driver you have to um, install separately so you'll see this now once we go there this is the latest driver and you'll see this is not the same version of what in, in um, windows was giving us yeah, the studio driver can still run games, no problem. Um, but it's just gives you, it's been tested a bit more, the studio driver with some of the, like, create applications and 3D, 2D, video, all that. So we're going to go here, NVIDIA graphics driver, because, uh, no, we don't want the GeForce experience. We're going to go to custom, advanced, next, perform clean installation. And as you can see, the current version is 528 that Windows gives us, but the new version is 531. Okay, I'm gonna go next. Studio drivers for the win. Absolutely. Are the Fire Cuda still best for endurance? Yes, they are pretty good. Moldy Apple is saying. Okay. Okay, we're gonna uh, finish the stream in a moment now. I heard some lunch is ready, so uh, I'm gonna get that there. But for Mark, let's open that while we have as well goes black because it installs the driver for a mark accept the driver next 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 install next and then we'll launch the fur mark nodes sorry fair mark there we go we can close all of these for now we're gonna check for Windows updates as well while it's still installing the graphics driver. Buon appetito. Is it better performance compared to the game ready drivers for the studio drivers? Um, Nvidia officially likes to say no, but sometimes stability gives you performance, if you know what I mean. But it, it shouldn't really. Alrighty, and close. So the GPU driver is installed. Windows is up to date now. Let's go back to hardware info 64. Okay. One last test of the hardware. Let's see what's going on. Okay, I'll leave that one in the middle there. Except, first of all, we're testing CPU, right? We're going to put 10 minutes on. No, single test. Because. As you can see, it's not thermal throttling on a first load. Let's see if that is true. Look at that. Boom. 36,951. Obviously, I've got a few things open here as well. But we're not thermal throttling. Yeah, we reached 96 degrees at the package. The cores were 93. But we didn't thermal throttle. Let's see if we can get it a bit higher. Let's see the clock speeds here as well. Five point one, five point something like that. It could have been because of the drivers and the management engine and all of these things as well that now we're reading a bit better things and it wasn't even thermal throttling previously as well. As you can see, air cooling completely fine, not thermal throttling, 253 watts pulling from the socket and the side panel actually helps because it helps to move the the air like through the case and actually there rather than just blow it out. So sometimes it's not the nicest thing. 
so there we go. CPU seems to be fine. Let's try it one more time. 175 watts. Okay, now we s only a split second we did thermal throttle because I guess the motherboard is still trying to push it to 5.5 gigahertz on all cores, but then realize our oh, pants can't actually. And then 5.1, something like that. About 36, 37,000 points there, which is completely fine. And then, like, in real world, you're never going to see that um, temperatures when you're using this case. Get the glass case there as well, because then it's going to be even better airflow there. But now let's check the GPU as well. Uh, resolution, let's put 1080p. And where's our GPU now? Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay. GPU stress test. Go. Interesting. Perhaps we need to restart. Let's have a look. Raptor Lake refresh. Well, it's probably not going to be refreshed. The next, so 14th gen, it should be on a lower node, Intel 5, if I'm not mistaken. That would mean that it's got, it should have better thermals there, yeah, indeed. Do you suggest to limit the power draw on 13600K? No. Just let it run 180 or something like that. What it, what it is asking there, um, it's it's fine. So let's try back the Fermark GPU test now, and hardware info. Once we've uploaded, updated the drivers and things. Resolution, 1080p. Scroll this down to our GPU. There we go. GPU stress test. Don't display this. And go. There we go. So, hardware info now. Let's have a look. We're pulling 447 watts. There's a little coil wind, something like that going. But it looks like it's fine. Look, it peaked at 265, sorry, 465. Just checking like where is it? It's just naturally pushing out some of the air from there as well. So you can feel it put in there as well. I mean, GPU is fine. 450 watts. Look at that. We're 67 degrees, slowly peaking. I'm not going to reach 77 degrees and 26.5 degrees here in this room. It's completely fine. Does it look a bit laggy to you, the Fermark? Even though it says we're running like 650 or something frames per second. I mean, this is completely fine here. Alrighty. And uh, that's how you uh, build the PC. As you can see, PC's all ready. It's working. Thermals are fine. Windows is installed. Cables are configured. Everything's everything's just it's brilliant. It's working fine. Um, two seconds. I just want to finish it with a nice. 
There we go. That's a bit better, isn't it? A little bit more, you know, lights it up rather than a bit dim than I saw it before. So if you never built a PC before, if you've never done it, as you can see, it's quite simple. Really, you just keep trying and something goes wrong, you go a bit back and it's like building with Legos and I think everyone can do it. As you can see, there's lots of people on the stream that have already built the PC. By the way, let me know right now if you've built your PC on the stream or not. I'd love to know how many yes or no's do we get. If you've never built it before, it is super simple and look how beautiful it can be. My personal favorite case, this one is, but I'd get the, te get the tempered glass version there because it would look even nicer there. And um, that's it really. If you ever want to know any of the other tutorials I have, or if you don't know which parts to choose, as always, there's PC build guides in the description below. They lead you to the latest video and they're completely free. The only way I get paid from this is if you purchase through the links in the description below of those videos. So that's the only money I'm getting. Um, obviously a little bit from YouTube AdSense if you do that, but it's it's like two dollars for thousand views So you get a lot of thousand views to to get anything The point is that you get the best performance as a creator because this channel is based on creators I really don't care about gaming and I'm never gonna talk about that on the channel, but That's what I cater for those who are creators and want to build something for themselves video photo 3d editing this is actually going to be for 3d uh, as well i re recommended to go with 13600k but they wanted to be a bit future proof and went with 13900k yeah as you can see there is uh people lots of people have been building or they will be building with my help soon john brilli said never built well it's time to start i've got some budget versions up, up coming up as well uh, less than thousand dollar bills and um, I've got one down there that's already built, but I haven't filmed like the intro for that video yet. So it's coming out. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. Really appreciate you. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. If you've got any other questions, just reach out on other videos that I've published recently. But um, there we go. And that's, that's it really. Okay, bye-bye.